How are you? I'm good. Well, you sound great. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Thank Amazing. You. I love that. Oh. You wrote that? I did. I did. At my church, um, I attend a, my home church in Nashville, and, and there's a place in the bulletin every Sunday for you to take notes, sermon notes, if you're, if you're the note-taking kind. And at the bottom, there's, a, there's always a question that says, so what? You know, in other words, based on what you've heard this morning, based on the teaching, based on the music, whatever. So what? Is there a response? And mm. I feel like that is sort of my, my life. So what? You know, I have, I have known grace. Therefore, I can be gracious. I have no mercy, you know, and so on. So. <laughs> kind of take that much is given, much is required yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's the name of your newest project, the new right? new project, yes. Yeah. So I can tell. Did you write pretty much all of those? Uh, all um, the yeah, songs on I wrote, the new one? yeah, wrote all the songs on the new album, just um, uh, pouring out after a hard season in my life. Um, so, <laughs> well, you've, you've God has really blessed. Uh, you've won Dove Awards. You've written nine number one songs um, <laughs> in, in in music. Mm -hmm. God has blessed you greatly in in music, and and so there's been a tough road. Yeah, um, well, part of uh, really, um, I don't know that any of these songs on this album would have been written had it not been for some of the things I've been through in my life. Um, in 2010, I am referring to now as my epic year, um, and that it was just uh, in about a six-month period of time, it was uh, my, uh, my daughter's high school graduation, my son's wedding, um, uh, my, grand, my grandmother died two months later. My grandfather passed away. Had to mm. do a short sale on the home that we'd lived in as a family for a number of years. And in all of that, my 22-year my marriage to my high school sweetheart was ending in divorce. And um, I, I was in it for the long haul, you in know. In 2000. Yeah, all in 2010. And so I have to exhale just even recounting all of that. And so there was a there was a long season there where I really wasn't writing a lot of new music. I was still going out and ministering, but I was kind of just trying to survive in my life circumstances. And um, it was, just wasn't the season. But after I got through all that, I, I actually attended a, a, a women's equipping conference in North Carolina. And um, through my experience there, I felt like God had given me my marching orders. You know, mm. I felt very clearly he was saying, now is the time to write again. And um, so I was settled. Um, I just knew my part was the obedience. I didn't know what the songs would be. I just knew my part was sitting my bum down on that piano bench, you know. Yeah. And then the songs just poured out freely, you know. Yeah. And God made a way for me to record this latest album. And Did you feel some sense of, of relief? sitting yes. down and writing and yes. going, okay, here's, 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 here's this situation. Yes, it was um, really sort of, I think, part of my healing because there were times yeah. where it was just, you know, I'm sitting at the piano and I'm singing to the Lord and tears are streaming down my face, but, but he was meeting me, you know. Yeah. And now from some of those most vulnerable, raw lyrics, um, you know, he's meeting others who are also in broken places. So. And, mm -hmm. and I love writing th that, that and the process is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> to get a song like that, mm -hmm. but that type of music is what helps mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. helps change their lives, mm -hmm. you know, and thank you for, you know, some people wouldn't put themselves out like that, oh. you know, and I thank uh -huh. you for that. I'm like compelled, you know, I can't, I can't really help it. Um, when, uh, for example, there was a Sunday in the middle of all of that turmoil and upheaval and change and uncertainty. I had so much fear. Mm -hmm. I was so overwhelmed in my circumstance. And um, But I went to uh, a Sunday evening service at my church. The emphasis was worship, communion. And I was so burdened. But I, I, I went anticipating, okay, God, I, you know, meet me, help me. And uh -huh. the pastor preached a sermon on the three things we need to survive. And I was like on the edge of my seat because I felt like, yes, I'm like, give me something. I need oxygen. And actually, he said that. He said the three things we need are, one, air. We need oxygen. Two, uh, he talked about food and water. We need sustenance. Three, we need God's presence. <laughs> And um, in my brokenness, I counted up those three things and I realized well, well, that while there was so much uncertainty in my life, I didn't know was, I, was God going to heal my marriage as I had believed for so long. 
Um, I didn't know, was I going to be single the rest of my life? I didn't know even at that point where I was going to live um, once the house sold. Um, but when he mentioned those three things, I knew that I had everything I needed in Christ. And I, understand it, I understood in a deeper way the all-sufficiency of Christ, what that means. You know, we say all these things, we sing these things, but um, you don't really know until, until you're at the bottom, bottom, bottom that he really is enough. Yeah. And I later wrote a song called Air, Food, and Water. So. Air, Food, and Water. <laughs> yeah. Air, Food, and Water. Anyway. Now, this might be a little, I, I, I have to ask this question. Mm -hmm. I think there's two, two emotional states that when we go through so much that, that are Christians, mm -hmm. that have known the way, raised up in church, mm -hmm. sing this music, you know, mm -hmm. do the hymns and the worship and everything. Mm -hmm. If things like this happen, turmoil strikes, one, they either run straight to the altar to God, mm -hmm. or number two, they're just like, why? Yes, you and know they, what get, I mean? they get angry at God. Yeah, kind yeah. of bitter. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, did you right. sense both of them? Sure, it was or? a gamut of emotions. I can remember, you know, um, scribbling in my journal one Sunday in church, you know, just, um, just, you know, God, I did everything you said, everything you required of me, you know, and just those moments, but I, but I knew even though I was frustrated, I knew that I could bring all of that to him. Yeah. Um, and then, then the next page, I'm repenting for my anger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, he, that, he is a safe place to run. Yeah. He, he really is. And he has um, just met me in so many beautiful ways, tangible ways. And I really have felt through this um, buoyed by the body of Christ. And, and that's such a great word. I felt just carried along, yeah. you know. So. I had to ask that question because I think there's a lot of people right now that's facing mm -hmm. situations like that and they just feel like, you know, one minute they're running and saying, God, I got to have your help. And then mm -hmm. next minute they're going, why did this happen to me, mm -hmm. God? You know, mm -hmm. and I think one of the tricks of the enemy wants us to sing, he wants to single us out and make us feel like we're the only ones that's feeling these things. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones mm -hmm. that's going through these mm -hmm. things. And I think the testimonies of, of you and others you know, give hope to, mm -hmm. to people who go, hey, I'm not alone in this thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Honestly, thank There's you. a verse in, uh, I believe it's First Peter, uh, the first chapter that's, I, I wish I had my Bible exact to read it, but it's something like, you know, these griefs of all kinds have happened so that our faith of greater worth than gold, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise and glory. Yeah. To, you know that verse? Mm -hmm. And I mean, so we don't always know why we go through this trial and suffering, but I, I believe that per, that verse sort of peels back a little bit of an answer to it us. Does. Um, that our faith might be proved genuine. And it's not that God needs to know that we believe because he knows whether or not we believe and whether or not that's a, a, a real thing f to us, but that so we can know that what we've said all these years, that it, we really do believe it from the deepest yeah. place of our hearts. You know? <laughs> uh, it brings back to a, to a story. It, it was a women's <laughs> conference that a lady had, they were talking about that very verse, mm -hmm. sits at the, as the silversmith, as a mm -hmm. refiner of silver, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she went and sit with the silversmith oh. and asked all these questions like, can, how do you know when it gets to its purest state? Can it be left? And he said, no, it can't be left any longer in the hottest part of the fire. It's no good. Mm -hmm. I'm always watching it. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I know that it is to its purest state when I can see my reflection in it. That's beautiful. And, and yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's what you're saying. Beautiful. Just totally, mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't waste our sorrows, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not for naught. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have written some tremendous songs in this. Thank you. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. you being here, too. You bet. My joy. Wow. Thanks for having me. You sounded great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just so feel it. <laughs> they can get your new record. Mm -hmm. uh, your website is on the screen. Mm -hmm. They can go there and get it as mm -hmm. well, and we encourage yeah. that for sure. And, um, yes. and yeah. I, re I, I love to write. Writing is my passion, whether it be um, music, but also blogging, and I'm working on a book and, and just walking like this before the Lord with that too. Yeah. So, um, There's a lot going on in your life. There is. Oh. But he's doing a new thing. There's a bridge lyric um, in the song I wrote on the one-year anniversary of the divorce was a sad day, but it was a reflective day. And the lyric in the bridge was um, from Isaiah. He said, see, I'm doing a new thing. 
do you not perceive it? <laughs> Making a way in the desert, filling up wasteland with streams. Yours is a story of winter. But my child, you have believed that I am the author of your life, and now I am writing your spring. <laughs> that is, Hallelujah. Yes. I got chills. Yes. <laughs>